Hello my friend, today I'm going to take you on a winter adventure through the mountains. I know I haven't posted a while about my rig, and that's my Lance 865 truck camper and my F250, but she has been a trooper this winter. She does great in the snow, and she keeps me nice and warm and toasty at night. It's actually a four seasons camper, so that means that not only does it keep it nice and warm inside, but it also heats all the plumbing and water systems so it doesn't freeze. If you haven't seen my video where I do a full tour of the inside of this thing, make sure you check it out. But today, I'm gonna be bringing you on an adventure through the mountains with this baby right here. It's basically a snowboard that splits into skis, and this allows you to hike in and up into the mountains and then snowboard down. I found splitboarding to be super peaceful because it's just you and nature and it's a ton of exercise, which is great because the more cardio you get, the longer you live. So you better not skimp out on that cardio. Yeah, I'm talking to you. And while splitboarding can be super peaceful, there is one major thing you have to be concerned about, and that's avalanches. And that's why I have an avalanche backpack. So we're gonna check and make sure it still works, okay? So on three, two, one, we're gonna blast off. Are you ready? I hope it still works. Okay, three, two, one. <laughs> so, as you can see, my airbag is still working properly. So there's a compressed tank of air that fills up my airbag if there was by chance an avalanche. And the idea is to keep you afloat in the avalanche so that you don't get buried. As you can see, I would float to the top. That's the idea, however, it doesn't always work out that way. And that's why avalanches can be super dangerous. So now that I tested this thing and I know it still works, I'm gonna deflate it, hook up my spare can of compressed air, do some yoga, and then we're gonna head out on an adventure. So, let's go. So we finally got a bunch of snow last week, but because of the high avalanche risk, if you go on the avalanche report, it'll tell you what kind of risk you're looking at every day. And it's been high every day since. So I really didn't feel safe going out to the back back country and avoiding an avalanche. So I wanted to pick somewhere generally safe that I was pretty knowledgeable with, familiar with. I'm pretty familiar with this area. The elevation is not super high. The angle's not too steep. It's under 30 degrees, so it's not very avalanche prone. I'm currently standing in knee deep powder. Um, so I'm really stoked that I'm gonna get some good powder up top, but near the bottom, it's gonna be pretty dry. So I'm probably gonna have to hike out. So it's gonna be a splitboard trip, a snowboard trip, and then a hike out trip. There's probably at least a 45 minute to an hour hike out, so I'm hoping I make it out before it gets dark so I don't get eaten by a bear or Bigfoot, whichever I see first. Anyways, here's some tips for safety if you're gonna be splitboarding. First and foremost, you always wanna have a partner. I am not splitboarding alone. Secondly, let's talk about some of the gear that you need to have to have a safe splitboarding trip. First off is my avalanche backpack, which you saw me deploy earlier. 
It's great. The second piece of equipment you're going to need are beacons. Your partner and you both need a beacon. There's two settings. When you're snowboarding or splitboarding, you always want to put it in the send mode. This means that your beacon is sending off a signal to be received. If by chance there's an avalanche, you get stuck or you get lost, the person who's looking for the lost person puts their beacon onto search. And that way it'll start searching for your signal. As you get closer, the distance will get lower and lower and lower until optimally you're right above them and it'll say zero. And from then, if it says zero and your partner's not next to you, it probably means they're under you. So then you pull out your handy dandy probe. This baby right here folds into a nice convenient size for your pack. So then when you're ready to use it, and then you pull on the little handle, and now you have a nice probe. So you can use this for multiple things. You can see how deep the snow is, pretty deep. Or once you've gotten to where your partner might be with your beacon, you use this to kind of push down into the snow and locate where they are. Hopefully you don't poke their eye out. If you hear a big, ow, you, you found your first. Anyways, basically you use it to locate and see how deep the snow is. Next is my shovel. So I've already put this together, but this is great because it comes apart in three pieces. Just like that. Then you can put it into your backpack really compactly. With the shovel, you basically just use it to dig people out or if you want to um, dig a pit and test the snow stability. But it's great because it just, it's got little notches. Shovel! Okay, so now I need to turn my skis back into a snowboard. And the way you're able to use it to splitboard is these skins right here. So these skins have a crazy type of glue on them and you slide them onto the each side of the ski and attach on either end. And it basically just gives you grip so that if you wanna go uphill, if you ever tried to ski uphill, it doesn't work very well. You just fall backwards and well, jack yourself up. I only know because I probably tried. Anyway, so you need these. These give you a great traction so you can go uphill in snow and powder. And then when you get to the top and you wanna snowboard down, you dismember your skis. First you flip this and then you don't want to get the skin dirty so you try to pull this off as gently as possible. It's this crazy reusable glue. Ta-da! So initially these were the skis. You want the straight edge out. So then your skins are off. Now you want to turn it back into a snowboard. Now you can't snowboard like this, right? My feet aren't in the right direction. So you take these awesome split board bindings, you flip up the toe and they come right out. There's a little hinge. You do it to both, toe up. Now I have my bindings detached and I re-clip the board together. Clip, clip, there, wait, clip, clip, clip. Okay, it clips together. Then you flip these tabs on each end, just like that. There's a little tab, slides. Then you do the top. Okay, so now my board's in one piece again. Pro tip, or Jerry tip. Don't ever let your snowboard fly down the mountain while you're putting it back together. Doesn't make for a very successful split board trip. So now we're going to put the bindings back onto the board. So there's two sets of plates on the board. You just line up the binding, the toe, with the first plate. Try to clear the snow away. You gotta get the right angle. And then they'll go in all the way and then you just flip down the toe again. Again, that was the toe piece that I pulled up earlier to dismount it from the skis. It also secures it to the snowboard. And we're gonna do it on the other side. Okay, so second binding, toe up. We're gonna line it up with the plate. Make sure the snow's cleared out of the way. Gotta jiggle it a little bit and then push the toe piece down again. And then you should be good to go as long as both toe pieces are pushed all the way down. And now you got a snowboard. Okay, it's time to snowboard. Let's get this run started.
So far, so good. Lots of fresh powder. Woo! It is so beautiful out here. There's no one out here. Just me and giant trees and of course you. I swear being around these huge trees, it's like, it's like nothing else. They just move and sway in the wind. It's amazing. We gotta get down before Bigfoot comes out to play. This is kind of like a recliner. I think I'll just stay here for a little while. So I'm about halfway down. The snow has gotten pretty sticky and sparse, so I have about a mile left of like hiking, skidding, whatever I can do. So I figured I'd stop. Have a cup of coffee. We're gonna pick up some fresh snow and we're gonna add it to my little stove here and we're gonna boil some water. So now that I've added some fresh snow, this little stove here boils water in about three minutes. So we're gonna let this sit for a second and boil. So I drink coffee every day. I always have, I always will. But I see a lot of people who drink energy drinks, and I'm not a huge proponent of those. I kind of feel like those are just heart attacks in a can. Sorry about the wind. There's a storm coming in, and we're about 7,000 feet up, and there's like 50 mile per hour winds coming in tonight, so you're gonna have to bear with me on the sound. But I'm a huge proponent of coffee, especially because it's a natural source of caffeine. There's a ton of research out there that says, coffee's really good for you even when you drink three to four cups a day as long as we're not talking about like a triple mocha frappuccino with extra whip also in the last couple of years there has been a huge push and increase in interest in mushrooms and how much beneficial and medicinal usage they have so this is another one of my products i've been working on it's a superfood seven mushroom instant coffee called pure earth mushroom coffee so the reason i started with an instant coffee product is well it's perfect for my lifestyle because when you're out traveling on the go, or off grid, and you can't get access to a coffee maker or Starbucks or a French press, instant coffee is great because all you need is hot water. And not only am I getting my source of natural caffeine, awesome superfood benefits of seven superfood mushrooms. And while you might at first glance think that sounds really gross, just a bunch of mushrooms ground up and muddy in your coffee, it's totally not. It tastes just like a normal cup of coffee because these are all U.S. grown organic mushrooms. They're super finely ground, so the second that the hot water hits it, it blends and dissolves seamlessly. So if you're interested in learning more about this coffee or supporting my channel, make sure you check out the link below to my website where you can learn more about my Pure Earth Mushroom Coffee and give it a try out. Here we go! This is going to be a great pick-me-up before I toast my butt down this mountain. Cheers! I'm telling you, if you like coffee, you should definitely try out this product. It's going to give me all the energy that I need to get down this mountain and run from the bear that comes after me. When I first started looking into instant coffee, I immediately shrugged it off. But then I put my scientist hat on and I realized you could take good quality coffee beans, roast, grind, and brew them and get great coffee and then freeze dry it and then have the same flavor and aroma as normal coffee. And then I don't have to do anything difficult to drink it when I need it for a huge hike down the mountain before a storm comes in and I don't fall into a ditch and die. Let's check out this run that I have to get down. Gonna be pretty interesting. Well, we've reached the end of the road. I just had to maneuver down that 
And now we get to hike all the way over to that town over there. So here we go. This should be fun. getting there. Look! Signs of civilization! I'm tempted to eat his carrot nose or move into the igloo down there, but I'm gonna keep trucking. Hi, Mr. Snowman. You're quite an attractive young man. Just kidding. <laughs> 